This week, we are at the 12th Ironman European Championship in Frankfurt, Germany. Follow Ironman World Champion Pete Jacobs going for the crown in Frankfurt. And meet the reigning European Champion and the 70.3 World Champion. It's the 12th edition of the Ironman European Championship in Frankfurt, Germany. The most prestigious race in Europe. Some people consider Frankfurt to be the second most important Ironman race in the world after Hawaii. Race director Kai Walter is expecting nothing less than an exceptional race. The elite of the sport will gather in Frankfurt, and I think it will be a spectacular race. Fast, dramatic, nobody will give anything away for free out there. The bike course goes through a populated region of 1.2 million people and connects the high-rise of buildings of Frankfurt with the picturesque landscape of the Wetterau. The contrasts make this course so special. The marathon run course lies in the heart of the city of Frankfurt and we run along the River Main. And with all those bridges connecting the city with the south side, for the spectators it is unmatched to see their athletes 20 times. More than 2,600 athletes from 55 nations will face the challenge of the Frankfurter Sparkasse Ironman European Championship. The finish line is one of the biggest and most emotional. We are in the heart of Frankfurt, the Römer. The gentle ascent at the Römerberg, the finish line, 10,000 people bringing every finisher home. I get goosebumps right away. The reigning world champion Pete Jacobs is in Frankfurt. The 31-year-old winner of Kona wants to compare himself with the best European athletes in their quest for the European crown. His passion for the sport started a long time ago. My mum was the first person in our family to do triathlon. My older brother and sister did a couple when they were young. And then when I was a teenager, I did maybe just one or two a year. Yeah, when I did my first Ironman when I was 20 years old, I, I felt that I would be able to win an Ironman and then uh, pretty much I turned professional because I believed I could win the World Championships. Pete's streak of podium positions continued over the last years in Ironman Australia and in Hawaii, and every time he managed to step up. It was a very long road and a long journey and a really steep learning curve um, to before I was able to achieve my dream. Crossing the finish line and, and winning was just pure joy. Um, it was the dream come true. With a tight schedule, Pete is not yet at the level he was on in Kona. Sponsor and appearance obligations linked to his new status have stolen some of his training time. Since winning the World Championships, you know, there's a lot more signings to do, a lot more interviews and, yeah, more jobs. It's, uh, it's good though, it's nice to feel useful. These new commitments haven't affected Jacob's timeline who prefers to compete rather than piling on the training hours. Which some people think I'm training a lot less, but in a long period, I'm uh, having more, or I'm, I'm still having a good amount of days. There are, everybody else still trains more than I do, but uh, you know, I train more than they think. On Sunday, Pete is most likely to lead the swim as it is his favorite discipline. I just swam since I was little. I learned to swim when I was about three years old and swam uh, all my life in swim squads. And, uh, and you know, I, I work on my technique uh, a lot. Pete maybe doesn't need lots of training hours, but having his wife Jamie next to him when he travels is key to his well-being and his success. Particularly in an Ironman, you need a lot of support. We often train together, we go to the pool together, we go for easy jogs and easy rides. I'm number one supporter. <laughs> Jamie Jacobs also caught the iron bug and has raced several races as an age grouper. Jamie understands um, the things that I have to put myself through. On Sunday, Pete's wife will be on the sideline, going through the usual emotional roller coaster. It's a little bit of anxiety and um, empathy because you the level of pain these guys put themselves through and when they're hobbling afterwards, you feel for them. 
It's time to get the gear in place in transition. The world champ will face fierce competition in less than 12 hours, and he likes it. I love the fact that it has, uh, you know, the titles of all the major Ironman races and 70.3 races for the last 12 months. I'm here to try and test the waters a little bit um, on the bike and just maybe see uh, that I can get closer on the bike and maybe give them a little bit of a, a something to think about. And hopefully get more insight to repeat his childhood dream in Kona later this year. There are great expectations of the reigning European champion. Marina van Hunneke is one of the fastest athletes in Ironman history and produced an impressive race in 2012. But with Jacobs in the mix, Marino does a bit of reflecting. I could perfectly live with it if he takes my crown here and I take his in, uh, in Kona in October. That would be a, a nice thing, but I don't think he will be that cooperative. Ah, I feel great uh, at the moment. Uh, a little bit anxious, a little bit nervous. Another favorite, Ironman 70.3 world champion Sebastian Kienle. He is hungry for a win over the full distance. I think I have already shown that I'm capable of good results over the long distance. I had the fastest Ironman debut there under eight hours. Sebastian's training struggled somewhat due to an injury in March, and he knows that this could make the difference. There will be no gifts given in this field. It is the strongest outside of Kona. The reigning European 70.3 champion, Anja Berenek, was also second in Frankfurt in 2012. She is back and the absence of last year's winner Caroline Steffen increases her expectations. I'm expecting a lot of myself. Tomorrow is the most important day of my season, so I've focused everything that I have on Frankfurt. Fellow German Christine Müller has shown that she is also one to be reckoned with, with podium positions over the last years and a win in Ironman Lanzarote. I'm happy with my season. In the beginning I was a bit shaken, and then to win Lanzarote was great and great for my confidence. Now I'm super motivated. I think one has to keep an eye on Jody Swallow and Camilla Pedersen from Denmark. I have never raced her, so I don't know her strengths and weaknesses. Race director Kai Walter is out at the lake for a last check. That was the last check of the swim course. It's looking good. The boys are out. Special here is the Australian exit. The athletes get out of the water one by one. And then there's the swim exit with the sandy hill. I think now it can start. Early in the morning at Langener Waldsee. Pro and amateur athletes from more than 55 countries prepare for the long day ahead. Barely five minutes to go. The start of the swim course is at the public swimming area of the Langene Walze. It's a two-loop swim with an Australian exit after 2.1 kilometers before completing the final 3.8 kilometers. Nice. 6.45 a.m. and the race is on for the pros. The journey begins. Everybody is fighting in the frenzied waters for a good position. The second wave has now started. The rest of the 2,600 athletes are in the Langener Walze. It hasn't taken long for the lead men to string things out. Michael Raylet is in front right now with a group trailing behind. The German has Marina von Hunecker, Pete Jacobs and Eneko Janos, the current Ironman Asia-Pacific champion, right on his heels. The lead group is swimming at an average speed of 1 minute 12 seconds per 100 meters. There are about 11 or 12 athletes up front. 
The group includes Daniel Unger, who is competing in his first full Ironman today. He's a former ITU world champion. Michael Relit is backstroking, checking the field behind, and decides to swim with the field as no advantage can be gained here. Leading the way in the women's race is Jody Swallow. She's swimming just at the tail end of a large group of men. With a split after 2.2 kilometers of 25 minutes, 24 seconds, Jacobs is leading the pack at the Australian exit. With him, Christian Ritter, Fraser Cartmel, Harry Wilcher, and Christian Kemp. Still in the lead of the women's race, Jody Swallow. Marina von Hunek is only 16 seconds behind Pete Jacobs at the Australian exit. Fighting for the title, nobody wants to show weaknesses in the water. We are looking at a fast swim. The conditions are perfect and a motivated lead group is keeping things moving along. Leading the way out of the water is Harry Wilcher with a swim split of 46 minutes, but he's got a ton of company. Up the steep hill, the lead group heads into transition. Wilshire is followed by Christian Ritter and Daniel Hawksworth, as well as Andy Becherer and the reigning world champ Pete Jacobs. Just after the men, leading woman Jody Swallow exits the water. T1 is all action. Andy Becher is sprinting to his bike, chased by a large group. Wiltshire and Raylet are off onto the bike course. Jacobs calmly readies himself to bike to the front of the race. Coming up after the break, can von Hunecker catch Jacobs on the bike? Sebastian Keenler already trails by 3 minutes 25 seconds. Can he catch the leaders? Welcome back to the Ironman European Championship in Germany. In the bike race, world champ Pete Jacobs is leading the way, chased by a strong defending champion. It's a two-loop, 180-kilometer bike course with a thousand meters of climbing. The main attractions are a steep climb in Bergen-Enkheim called The Beast and the infamous Heartbreak Hill, which both provide spectator hotspots to spur the athletes on. Pete Jacobs is feeling somebody breathing down his neck. It's the reigning champion. With him, an Eko Janos on his wheel. Maruna von Hunneke moves into the front, passing Jacobs. Will the 2012 champion from Belgium dominate this race on the bike as he did last year? Jody Swallow, what a great swim for the Brit. With her is Lucy Reed and Denmark's Camilla Pedersen, another dark horse in our race today. Second in 2012, Anja Baranek has a deficit of 2.10 on Swallow. Marino von Hunneke appears to be ready to stamp his authority on this race. He is extending his lead over Jacobs and the chase group of up to 2 minutes 26 seconds. ITU champion Daniel Unger overtakes Michael Raylet and is trying to push the speed of the group. Von Hunneke flying over the course at an average speed of 41 kilometers an hour. But is it enough to hold off Jacobs? Andy Bucherer and Pete Jacobs taking turns doing the work, but still not able to dent Von Hunneke's lead. At 88k, Marina Von Hunneke reaches Heartbreak Hill. Raylet still chasing and looking strong on the bike. The group chasing Marino for the title is in Eko Janos, Andy Becherer, Jan Raphael and Pete Jacobs. At the end of the first loop, Van Hunneke continues to increase his lead. In Eko Janos completes lap one of the bike, only three minutes four seconds behind the leader. Pete 
114 kilometers into the bike, Keenla is giving everything, but not looking good. He is eight minutes off the lead and falling back. Michael Raylet is also struggling to stay with the leaders. He climbs out of the saddle, keeping his cadence up. Marino von Hunica has reached the top of Heartbreak Hill for the second time. The climb is typically jam-packed with spectators. Van Hunica remains in front with an advantage of 4 minutes 40. The chasers soak up the energy of the crowds. The leader is now off the bike and running through transition. He clocked a bike split of 4 hours and 30 minutes, three and a half minutes slower than last year. Starting the marathon, he appears exhausted and to be fighting the heat. The chase group now reached transition led by Andy Becherer. Jan Rafael, Jacobs and Eneko Janos are right behind him. This is going to be fun. Yeah, good. Happy about that. Feel good. Hey, on. And off onto the run he is, cheered on by his wife, Jamie. The course heads along the northern embankment of the River Mine, crossing over to the southern embankment, where thousands of spectators support the athletes along the Shaoman Kai. Van Hunneke is still in the lead. Jano starts the run 3 minutes 14 off Van Hunneke. Jano smoked the group out of T2 and has got about a 50 meter gap on Raphael, Jacobs, Zeebroek and Bucherer. Michael Raylet is now 10 minutes 9 seconds behind Van Hunneke. Can the former 70.3 world champion catch up with the leaders on the marathon in his third ever full Ironman? Sebastian Keenler is now also in transition and lost even more time on the bike. He trails by 12 minutes 38 seconds. Keenler also needs to finish this race to secure Kona points and keep his high ranking. Jody Swallow is off the bike and running into T2. Swallow looks pretty good as she starts the marathon, well ahead of the chasing woman. Beranek fell back to fifth, more than 10 minutes off Swallow. Beranek clearly must have had trouble on the bike. I was vomiting the whole time. I don't know what's wrong. I'm feeling totally terrible. Have lost so much time. Let's see what happens. If it's as bad as on the run, then that's not good. Last year's runner begins her journey on the marathon. However, her stomach issues continued and forced her to retire from the race later on. Meanwhile, at the front, Van Hunneke doesn't seem to be running too quickly. Jan Raphael just ran by Van Hunneke so fast, it looked like the Belgian was walking. The German is flying. Today, he appears to be determined to get himself in the picture. Van Hunneke runs solo, having just been overtaken by Janos. As Rafael quickly takes a pit stop, Janos uses this opportunity to move into first place. Eneko Janos is now in the lead. Pete Jacobs continues to look smooth and relaxed as he runs along in third place. The world champ passes Jan Rafael to take second place, but continues to lose time to Janos. However, suddenly, the wheels seem to come off for Jacobs. He slows to a walk. The world champ seems to be paying the price for the hard pace early on. Fanunica has also started to walk through the aid stations. Not a great sign. The Belgian needs to get some points today to guarantee his Kona slot. Jan Raphael is still in second, but is starting to fight some cramping. Janos continues to hold first place. What a race. Pete Jacobs fell behind. Belgium's Axel Zeebrick moved to third place and is surprisingly chased by Sebastian Keenler. Where did he come from? Keenler continues to fly through the early stages of the marathon and has now moved to fourth with an average speed of 3 minutes 54 seconds per K. He manages to get 40 seconds on Zeebrick, but such a chase does cost a lot of energy. 
the race for third place is still wide open. Meanwhile at the Roma, the tension is rising, the heat also. Janos is close to the finish, he is floating towards the line. Janos is pushing to try and get to the line in under eight hours. A spectacular race for Ineco Janos from Spain. In a time of 7 hours, 59 minutes and 58 seconds and a marathon of 2.44.12. It was a really tough day for everybody and I suffered a lot at the end but uh, well, I, I won the race so what is going to say and I went under 8 hours so I'm really, really happy. Jan Raphael from Hannover, Germany is on his way to a safe runner-up finish. Raphael finishes in a great time of 8.07.19. I'm totally satisfied. There is no shame in losing against an Eko, especially in this year. He's in incredibly good shape. He has proven over the whole season that he might be the best athlete in the world at the moment. You have to recognize that. So more than second place was not possible for me. Baz Diederen is powering into third place. The big man from the Netherlands was nearly sprinting the last kilometers for the final podium position. What a season for Eneko Janos, adding the title of European champion to his wins this year. Michael Reilert barely made it to the line. He staggered up the finishing chute and then collapsed across the line, 17 minutes behind Janos in seventh place. Last year's runner-up and 70.3 world champion Sebastian Kienle finishes ninth. Still an important result to add to his Kona points. In the women's race, Jody Swallow couldn't hold on to first. Camilla Pedersen has now moved into the lead and the finish line is waiting for her. But the path to breaking the tape wasn't a smooth one, with the effort showing in Pedersen's body language. Pedersen takes home the crown in Frankfurt, an impressive sub nine hour race in her first official Ironman event. I'm really overwhelmed. Um... It's my first Ironman, like full Ironman race, um, and then and then I won. It, it's amazing. I won the half distance the ITU, so now I can say I'm an I, a European champion on half distance and full Ironman distance. So and I'm going to Kona, so I'm really excited about that. Swallow also broke nine hours, with Germany's Christine Müller taking a well-deserved third. Last year's champion finishes in 19th. The finish earns invaluable Kona points. Pete Jacobs also struggled, but isn't too disappointed. It happens when you haven't put in the amount of training that I should have, um, just because I couldn't. Um, you know, time frames are from, uh, from injuries and traveling. You know, I, I did what I could, so I'm happy with uh, how the rest of the race went. An emotional day in Frankfurt for the athletes and the spectators. The European champions are celebrating with them. I've never tried anything like it. It was amazing, the crowd is amazing, and all the spectators here, like, still after 15, 16 hours, um, it's been a long day for them as well. In Ironman, a finish is a win, and made even more emotional, meaningful, and special when finished on the same carpet as the newly crowned European champions. After nearly 15 hours, Manfred Seibold is celebrated as the final finisher. I just wanted to cross that line. I had injuries in my preparation. The heat, finishing was my only goal, and I'm really excited I made it. With his finish in Frankfurt, Sebastian Kienle moved up to the head of the Kona Pro rankings again. And Eko Janos' victory in Frankfurt earned him a second place. Pete Jacobs activated his Kona ranking by finishing a full Ironman and is now in seventh. In the women's standings, Jody Swallow climbed up to seventh place with her strong run-up finish at the European Championship.
Next week, highlights of the Ironman 70.3 Norway in the charming Norwegian town of Hogesund. And we spend time with one of the favorites in the ladies' field, Michelle Vesterby of Denmark.